Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Corn Mirror. Today is March 22nd, 2013. And today I want to talk to you guys about a little NFL football news. Earlier this week, I believe Wednesday, Tuesday, sometime this week, the NFL owners had them have their annual owners meeting. And this is the meeting that takes place between the owners to determine what rule changes and what changes to the organization and I guess management they want to vote on. And two of the most key things that changed this season as to previous seasons is one, the infamous tuck rule is gone. The reason why this is a big deal that the tuck rule is actually gone is because this tuck rule became infamous when the Raiders played New England Patriots in a divisional game, I believe in 01, where no matter what anybody says and what the rule actually was, Tom Brady fumbled the ball. Now, so I can better explain, I'm gonna use a visual prop. Hopefully I have enough screen to actually cover this, but hold on, guys, so I get my prop. But basically the tuck rule is this. When a quarterback goes back to throw, normally, he goes back, he throws, the ball usually releases, if you guys can tell, around this angle. You know, maybe a little bit further down if you want to shoot a straighter, a little bit further up if you want to get more air underneath it. But usually around this area here, is where a quarterback will usually release the ball in the throw. Now the play in question and when this rule became infamous is Tom Brady came, he looked, I believe at a, at a wideout or a running back, I can't really remember the, the play per chance. He came, he threw, he passes the actual area of release. He goes to put the ball pretty much straight forward and started bringing it back into his body. He gets hit from the back and the ball pops out. Now, the original call was that it was a fumble. Raiders recovered it. They were on their way to victory. But according to the rule, even though Brady had passed his area, had already pretty much pointed the ball down and brought it back, since he did not bring his other hand to cover the ball or tuck it into his body, and this is my understanding of the rule, this was still considered a passing motion and was deemed an incomplete pass, giving the New England Patriots a chance at the time field goal and later on in overtime to the overtime win. So now, no matter if the ball is down here or here, if it pops out and it seems to be like there's no throwing motion in play, it's a fumble. There's no securing it. There's no, you know, trying to get the other hand in. If you pass this and you're here and you get hit and the ball is out of your hand, it's now a fumble. Again, to the best of my knowledge, that's what changed. In my opinion, for Raider fans, I don't, I'm not a Raider fan. For Raider fans, 11 years too late, but that is now gone. And the second key rule is that now running backs will not be allowed to lower their head first and hit defensive players with the crown of their heads. This has been somewhat minimized on the defensive end as now it is against the rules and I believe consider unsportsmanlike behavior if a defensive player lowers his head and leaves with the crown of his helmet and hits an offensive player, it's a 15 yard penalty and an automatic first. Now that's going to apply to running backs. And basically what's going on with running backs is, is I'm going to go with the side angle here and hopefully you guys can see. And sorry for the messed up hair. I need a haircut. Basically running backs nowadays have this habit of lowering their heads and sticking it into the chest or the helmet of the defensive player. That This motion here will be considered a 15-yard offensive penalty and if not caught within the game will be fined by the NFL if deemed that that offensive contact was illegal. Now, in my opinion, look, I'm all about making the game safer. I'm all about trying to keep them safe. I never really understood why running backs will ever lower the head like this. You can get your, you know, you can get hit on top of the head while you're hitting another player, stub your neck, get hit on the side, you know, like it, it's out there. You know, your neck is, is in this position, in my opinion, very vulnerable to getting broken, cracked, stubbed, sprained, whatever. You know, once you break this, you know, the hinges of you not walking for the rest of your lives are very, very severe. So I never understood why they actually did that. But seeing why some running backs actually do it is because defensive players are still allowed to go for the offensive player's knees. And I've been wanting this to change for a long time. I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. I don't think that defensive players should be allowed 
to dive at the knees of the offensive players. The best, I guess, example of this needing to be changed happened, I'm gonna say roughly 12 years ago. I believe it was the Orange Bowl between Florida or Miami and Ohio State, I believe was the game. I'm sorry, I should have I should have researched this beforehand, but it was Willie Mc, Willis McGahey who was running the ball back. He goes to cut the corner. A defensive player comes, dies for his knees. Both of his cleats are pretty much stuck to the ground. The defensive player comes and pretty much just chops out his knees and you see his knee just from the back just implode. That almost cost him his career in the NFL at the college level and it sucks and what I'm noticing is the reason why offensive players are doing this is because they do this while lowering themselves down meaning that they're, they have a lower center of gravity which protects their knee. I'm a little twisted and not so much because you won't see like Adrian Peterson or Steven Jackson just run over people but I feel that that opens up the running backs to more severe knee injuries and I believe that the diving for the knees of an, of an offensive player needs to be changed even if they're not engaged I believe that needs to be changed once you change that and make it that all tackles have to be engaged from the waist up I believe that's when the game can be a lot safer because if you know from the waist down there's just too many variables that you can end anybody's career not just a running back quarterback wide receivers offensive linemen you know linebackers whatever anybody's career could end when you try to tackle them from the waist down i believe the only time a tackle should be allowed from the waist down and again this is just my opinion is what i like to call the predator trip or the wrap up from behind you know like if you're trying to wrap them up while you're running after them and you happen to just grab them underneath the, the waist or trip them up like a lion will trip a gazelle or a zebra in my opinion that's fine but front to front a defensive player should never be allowed to dive at a offensive player's knees. That's just my opinion. So those are the two rule changes for anybody who watches the NFL. What do you guys think about these two rules that were changed? I like the fact that the tuck rule is gone. The running back one I believe is a little bit more controversial. I like the fact that it will keep the running backs a little bit safer because again, I don't like the fact that you know the neck is vulnerable when they're in that position, but I believe that opens them up to more severe knee injuries, which can you know end their career similar to a neck injury, but people don't come back from e either injury, but I think it opens up the potential for more injuries to the knees. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. This has been Corn Beater. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.